Shiny Pokemon, a rare version of a- oh, we already used a script in a video? Damn. That's right folks, we're back at it again with another custom shiny video. If you haven't seen the last one, I'll run it through you quickly. Normal Pokemon, shiny Pokemon, shiny Pokemon in this game. All shinies are custom. Normal playthrough? Boring. Let's do a shiny lock. Don't know what that is? Rules are on screen now. Read them up kids. Shiny odds are 1 in 100. Because of this, we will get a shiny in every route or different area because this game's routes are weird. Also, I'm not an epic gamer, so I won't be applying a level cap. This game is harder than the original Ultra Sun and Moon, and if you know anything about these games, they aren't that easy. Let's begin. I decided to choose Rowlet, and 128 mini movies later, boom, custom shiny. Thank god I'm done with those cutscenes. We give him the name Autumn. Oh even more cutscenes. After watching this lost girl's space creature get jumped by some birds, we save it and in return it tries to kill us. But have no fear, Ernie the chicken from Family Guy is here. Ooh, shiny rock. We got our second Pokemon already. What? This doesn't count as a Pokemon, but this one does. Why can't I draw a smiley face on mine? 2000 cutscenes. Later. Okay, finally. We're on Route 1, and 98 encounters later, we find our first shiny. That makes a lot more sense. Honestly, that makes so much more sense. Oh, wait, why are you so bad? Wait, 98 encounters, but that's... I'm going to rate every single shiny we found in this video and show a side-by-side -side comparison of the original shiny, starting with Pichu. I'm honestly going to give this a 3 out of 10, as it's not that great, but it's slightly different enough to where you can notice it. And in my opinion, it is better than the original shiny. We name him Doodoo, as it fits the shiny, and head south to the professor's lab to watch even more cutscenes but eventually we actually get to play the game after 63 encounters we find our next shiny which bot commands are so limited into the way you can actually do oh okay that's actually a nice shiny i don't really like this pokemon but the shiny is pretty nice i give it a 6 out of 10 it's better than the original 100 percent we name him trash we take on some of the trainer school trainers and i remember that this trainer has a shuckle which knows rollout and half of our team is currently weak to rock with the other pokemon being a baby pokemon so we decide to get our next encounter before we take on this trainer 49 encounters later and we find a cheeky little fox oh yo that's fire that is insane that looks so good. Chat decides to name it Volo, and I gotta give this thing a 7 out of 10. I don't necessarily think it's better than the original, but it is an amazing take on it. We take down the Shuckle pretty easily, leading with Doodoo, who charms it three times, dropping its attack stat down to minus 6. We then swap into Volo and chip it down with Pursuit, and it goes for a bite, so we get a free swap into Trash, hitting it with a Supersonic to confuse it, and take it down with a couple water guns. Next up is the Teacher, and she has Litten, which is strong against our Rowlet. Thankfully, we have Trash on our team, who was able to one-shot it with Water Gun after a few fake tears from Volo. We head into Haoli City, grab a couple totem stickers, and begin our next shiny hunt. After 300 encounters, which is three times over the shiny odds, we find nothing. So we decide to fight Team Skull, and I accidentally misclick and accept Alima's challenge. They lead with Young Goose, and we lead with Autumn, and we do about half its health before switching into Volo. We hit it with a Pursuit, and it hits us with a Leer. Lima heals, and then we go for Pursuit, and then we yet again hit it for one more Pursuit, and Tackle takes us down. I completely forgot about the Leers, and was an honest mistake on my end. We swap back into Autumn, who takes it down. Last out is Smeargle, who happens to know Ember. We stay in with Autumn and take a crit Ember before going for Razor Leaf. We tank yet another Ember and drop it down to red with yet another Razor Leaf before switching into Trash and taking it down with a Water Gun. Rest in peace, Volo, but we have a shiny hunt to finish. 80 more encounters later, totaling at 380 encounters and almost four times over the shiny odds, we find this little guy. But display the right like to read. Oh, wait, that is fire! 367 shiny Magnemite? Insane odds, it, like almost four times over odds, insane, but hold on, wait, that's actually a banger shiny. Gauss Pulse has yet again found his way into another video. I gotta give it a 5 out of 10, as I don't personally think it's better than the original shiny, but I like the red, and I can't wait to see what this thing looks like when it evolves. We head north the route 2, and chat decides that we should hunt in the cemetery first, and after 240 encounters, we find a blood bet. So this one right here, Dolly was saying the shiny. Is she right? Oh! That looks fire! I think this thing deserves a 7 out of 10. It's definitely better than the original, and I honestly cannot wait to see what this thing looks like as a crowbat. We stopped Team Skull from harassing this man scene, and Doodoo -doo evolved into a Pikachu. It didn't change much, but we're really hoping that Alolan Raichu comes in clutch. After 218 encounters, we find a not-so-custom shiny. Oh! Finally! 
Rare shiny monster. Chat and I collectively agreed to name this no BB and not explain the context to YouTube, so I guess you gotta come by the Twitch streams to understand the lore. Overall, this is a 5 out of 10 shiny. Not bad overall, but it barely changes. We begin our first trial, which requires us to kill a couple young goose, and then we get to take on the totem Pokemon Gumshoes. If you didn't already know, totem Pokemon are bigger versions of normal Pokemon and are this game's type of gym battle. In every totem Pokemon battle, the totem Pokemon will have a stat raise. This can range from its physical defense going up all the way to a triple Omni boost which raises all of its stats by three stages. Thankfully, we're just at the start of the game, so this totem's only boost is its defense stat by one stage. We leave with Doodoo since we tied at Brick Break, but it doesn't do a lot of damage. It drops our speed with Scary Face and then calls in a Young Goose. Another thing about these battles is the totem Pokemon will always call in an SOS Pokemon, essentially making it a 2v1. Doodoo one-shots the Young Goose and the totem Gumshoes hits us with a tackle, dropping us below half health. We switch into No Bibi who eats the next tackle, then it becomes a battle of tackles and eventually No Bibi takes it down. After receiving the normal MZ as proof of completing our first trial, we get rewarded with yet another shiny hunt. And after 187 encounters, this happens. I hate soft cookies oh yo wee hold on soft cookies are still bad but that is a nice shiny oatmeal raisin is awful oatmeal cookies are good but oatmeal raisin is terrible oatmeal chocolate chip is insanely underrated I misclicked and ran away. I'm so disappointed in myself, but we must move on. We head into Melee Melee Meadow as we skip our encounter of the northern part of the map for now. 102 encounters later, and we find what might be one of my favorite Alolan Pokemon. Cutie Patootie returns! Right after we caught it, Autumn gains enough XP to level up and evolve, and I actually surprisingly really like this shiny. I saw this on stream, and now you guys have to, but not before we rate Cutie Patootie. This is such a nice blue, and I've got to give it an 8 out of 10. I can't say it's better or worse than the original, as I really like both of these. But back to what I was saying, just watch. It has eyes! Right beside the Melee Melee Meadow, we can head into Seaward Cave, where we find a very tanned duck after only 33 encounters. When you put it in ways like that, it's so much more easy to remember. Like, when you give... Oh! He's pink! He's pink! Yo, 33 encounters! I'm gonna give this guy a 7 out of 10. But honestly, I don't think it's better than the original shiny. I don't know, something about the blue duck just hits different. Chat decides to give him the name Tan Lines, which I think is an amazing name, and it fits perfectly. Catching me completely off guard, how it comes out of nowhere and challenges us to a battle. Thankfully, we had Doodoo in the front slot as he leaves with Poplio. We take it down with two Electro Balls as it almost takes us down with two Aqua Jets. Ao sends out Noiba, so we switch into No BB who takes it down with two Headbutts, and last out is Pikachu who also gets Headbutt to death by No BB. One thing I'm going to allow myself to do is get one island skin Pokemon per island. Chat and I decided that Lewick would be a really cool hunt to find, so we started our hunt and after only 121 encounters in the cemetery, our shiny candle appeared. Chup. I got a Oh! No, that looks so good! The white's still white, but oh my god! Look at the flame! And the pink eye, 121. I gotta give this thing an 8 out of 10. This might be a little biased because I love this Pokemon, but this is 100% better than its original shiny. Chad decided to show off their creativity and give it the name Fire. Then we head north to get a Route 3 encounter, and 37 encounters later... I love this one. Don't sparkle. Why? We were looking at the internet! Shiny, <laughs> shiny Spiro. Shiny Spiro, I think that was 37. Yep, 37 encounters. I like this little guy. I gotta give him a 6 out of 10. The blue is a nice touch, and it's better than its original shiny in every single aspect. Continuing the creative names, we name it Bird. With all the shiny hunting out of the way, it's time to take on our first island kahuna. Also, we changed the team up a little bit to give us every advantage we could get going into this fight. He leads with a chop, and we lead with Bird. We hit with a peck doing maybe a fifth of its HP before getting one shot by revenge. Yikes. Trash comes out and misses a supersonic before tanking a revenge, and we hit the next supersonic, and Machop hits itself with confusion. Paula uses a full heal, and we hit it with a water pulse, and next turn, Machop falls to yet another water pulse. Next out is Makuhita. We get hit with a fake out and flinch turn one. Next turn, we hit it with a supersonic before getting hit with five arm thrusts, bringing us down to just two HP. Not wanting to take any risks, we gravel it to lower its attack and sacrifice trash. 
Autumn comes out and takes half its HP with a peck before getting hit with an arm thrust that does two damage. I think it's safe to say we're fine for this fight. Last out is Crip Brawler. We hit it with a peck before it hits us with Pursuit, which we absolutely heat. Autumn is a unit. Two pecks later and we take it down, winning our first Island Kahuna fight. We unlock the ability to ride Tauros and Bro's looking a bit sunburned. Rest in peace, trash and bird. And we add Fire and Gauss Pulse back to the team. With Tauros unlocked, we can now reach 10 Carat Hill, where we find a shiny rock and roll it in only 146 encounters. To be swear. Oh, wait. Hold on. Wait, that's kind of fire. Shiny rock and roll 146. Yo. This beauty of a shiny deserves at least an 8 out of 10. And despite me really liking the original shiny rock and roller, I think this one is a bit better. We name him Fast, since he has the weak armor ability, which raises its speed at its cost for defense every time it gets hit. Next up is the area outside of 10 Carat Hill, where after only 4 encounters, we find a 1 in 8 billion Pokemon. Oh, you're so right. Po we figured out what the cry was. It's a Spinda. I don't really like this Pokemon, so I'm not gonna give it any attention in this video. Cool shiny though, four out of 10, better than the original. All right, let's move on. We learn how to Mantine Surf and reach Akala Island. The first thing we do when we get here is buy a backpack for 8,000 Poke Dollars. Cause drip is love, drip is life. We grab some stickers and then fight Dexio, who has a Mime Jr. and an Espeon, but Autumn took care of them both with a few ominous wins. Next up is Route 4, and only 48 encounters later, we find what might be my favorite custom shiny thus far. Oh, wait, that looks so nice. Shiny Lollipop 40 encounters. He looks so good. He looks like an ice type. This little guy deserves a 10 out of 10. I absolutely love this shiny. And Chad has the brilliant idea to name it Ice Spice, which I found absolutely hilarious. I wants to run it back with another battle and we accept his challenge. He leads with Brion as we lead with Gauss Pulse and it goes for Baby Doll Eyes as we set up Light Screen. We then take an Aqua Jet before hitting a Thunder Shock and paralyze it. We then swap into Autumn, who absolutely eats an Aqua Jet before we just barely take it down with a Razor Leaf. But it returns with some big damage going for a four times super effective Icy Wind. We take it down next turn and House sends out a Noima, so we swap into Fast to take it down with some Rock Blasts. Next out is Pikachu and Fast does some good damage before we eventually switch into No BB who headbutts it to death. Last out is Eevee and a few headbutts is more than enough to take it down. We pull up to the ranch and meet some girl who gives us a Stoutland Pager, so we can ride on it, but we probably will never do that. But we can begin our next shiny hunt. 191 is our next encounter count for this silly little guy. It's dumb that you are... Shiny Mudbray, this doesn't look that bad, honestly. And honestly, this is solid shiny. I'm not a huge fan of the Pokemon itself, but the shiny deserves at least a five out of 10. We head up north, hoping to find one of my favorite Pokemon from Alola, and while checking the grass to see if it's there, we stumble across our encounter. Um... <laughs> okay, two encounter shiny Metapod, wow. I mean, it, it, this is a good shiny, I guess, but it, it's a Metapod, so there's not much to say about it. Six out of 10, but we give it the name Mach 2. We encounter Gladion and he challenges us to a battle. He leads with Zubat and we lead with Dudu, who hits it with an Electro Ball and is revealed to be a Zorua using its ability. Zorua hits us with a Fake Tears and we just barely take it out with a Brick Break before getting nearly one shot by a Critical Hit Pursuit. It falls next turn and he sends out the real Zubat this time, so we swap into Fast who takes it out with a Rock Blast. Last out is Type Null and we swap into No BB, but it pursues Fast before we swap. As per every battle with No BB, I use Baby Dolls twice and Headbutt it to death, claiming us victorious. Afterwards, I decided to shiny hunt for the Gift Egg Eevee, and after only 28 resets, we finally got it. Three. Ooh, I got it! Wait! I kind of like that. This thing looks great. I think the yellow is a nice touch and I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10, but I don't think this is any better or worse than the original shiny. It's just another great take on it. I give it the name Psychosis as I plan on evolving this into an Espeon. With all of that out of the way, I assemble the team I want to fight what is in my opinion one of the hardest totem fights in the game, the Araquanid. This fight always has rain to boost its water moves and it has leech life to regen its HP. We start training the team a bit to take on this monster of a totem and during the process, Ice Spice evolves. I don't think this is a bad shot by any means, but it is nowhere near as good as the lily pup. And we begin our second trial. Lana gives us the Lapras pager, so now we can surf, and this pink Lapras looks amazing. 
We defeat a couple wishy-washy, making our way deeper into the den until we come face to face with the Araquanid. We led with Gauss Pulse and get hit by a bubble with just three quarters of our HP before hitting a Thunder Wave and paralyzing the Araquanid. It then SOSs for its partner Pokemon Dewpiter. Next turn we set up Light Screen and Gauss Pulse dies. Rest in peace Gauss. We switch into Doodoo and try to Sweet Kiss the Totem, but it misses. The Totem is fully paralyzed, but we still take a bubble from the Dewpiter. We try to Sweet Kiss it again, but miss once more. We get hit with the Leech Life in a bubble, which takes Doodoo down as well. Next up is our newly evolved Ice Spice, who does about a quarter damage to the Totem with a takedown, but it hits a crit Leech Life on us and basically heals all of the damage we just did. We also take a bubble from the Dewpiter, dropping us down to 2 HP, so we hit another takedown and die to recoil damage. Cutie Patootie is out next and hits the Dewpiter with a Stun Spore, paralyzing it before getting one shot by a bubble. No BB comes out, and we sand attack the Araquanid, which gets fully paralyzed, but the Dewpiter still hits us with bubble. We then headbutt the Araquanid, gets fully paralyzed again, and take again another bubble. Headbutt the Totem once more, and it flinches, and the Dewpiter still hits us with bubble, slowly chipping us down. One more headbutt takes down the Totem Pokemon, and we just barely survive another bubble. One headbutt is more than enough to take down a Dewpiter, and we won this Totem fight, but it only costed us two thirds of our entire team. Placing our Fallen into the dead box, we fill up our team once again, and now that we've unlocked the ability to surf, we have a couple shiny Pokemon to find. Starting in the trial itself, where after 187 encounters, we find a singing bird. Why don't you- Oh! I don't know if this was an oversight or not, but I don't even think this chat out is a custom shiny. I'm gonna come back to this area and re-hunt this a little bit further into the video and find something that's actually custom. Given that, we're going to skip the rating and run it back later. We head back to Melee Melee Island where we can get two new Pokemon. The first of which we encounter in the Melee Melee Sea after 55 encounters. Nuh uh. Oh, okay. Shiny Tentacle, 55 encounters? It's a Tentacle. Let's be real, it's not all bad. The shiny is cool, but what can I really say about this thing? I don't think it's better than the original, but I will give it a 6 out of 10 because it's not bad. Chad gives it the name Brainiac, which I think is super fitting. We exit the southern exit of Seafoam Cave, leading us to Kala's Bay, where after 246 encounters, we find fear. And you can give me if I, you're willing to share another hint. Oh, we got it! Shiny Alolan Rattata, 246 encounters! Oh my god, thank god it's over, and that looks so cool. I love this shiny. It looks great. Solid 7 out of 10, maybe even an 8. And in my opinion, it is better than the original shiny, but I feel like it comes down to which color you like more. Coming back to Akala Island, we can head south from the ranch to Route 6 to get our next encounter. We do about 200 encounters and find nothing other than duplicates. Are you kidding me? That's when Chat and I decided to do our first SOS hunt for Eevee. We chose this because we could only find two new Pokemon in the route out of like six different Pokemon. And although Eevee is a duplicate, it can evolve in so many ways. And since the whole point of this video is to show off custom shinies, we decided to make an exception here. After about eight SOS encounters, we find what we're looking for. Oh, we got it! Let's go, baby! I didn't even realize we got it! Yes, sir! I decided to give it the name Lemon, since this Eevee is yellow, and we have absolutely no idea what we're going to evolve it into, so it's hard to give it a nickname for its evolution when we don't know. We then head back to the Water Trial to redeem our shiny, like I had mentioned earlier. Oh! Yo! Shiny Paris! That's not what I wanted, but that is such a nice shiny! 77 encounters! Look at that thing! Look at it! I gotta give this shiny a 9 out of 10. It looks beautiful and is in every way, shape, and form better than its original. On our way out, our Eevee evolves, and at first I didn't really like this shiny, but the more I've used it on the team and in the playthrough, the more it's grown on me. What do you guys think? Personally, I think it's an 8 out of 10, but I don't think it's better than the original. We meet an oddly familiar face, battle in the free-for-all, and head towards the next trial to get another encounter. After 182 encounters, and we find yet another bird! Oh, wait, no, that's so, oh, I don't know, I don't know, I like it, but I don't like it, but I like it, but I don't like it, shiny fletchling, 182 encounters, oh, I like it, but I don't like it, but I really like it, but I really don't like it, but I think it's gonna be beautiful when it evolves, but I really don't like it, but I really love it. As you can tell, I don't know how to feel about it. Seeing the blue wings makes this a good shiny for sure, so it gets at least a 6 out of 10. And in my opinion, it's better than the original. We give it the name Mordecai. We then get out our fishing hats, kick back, and patiently wait for our shiny fish to appear. I don't even think I can fish shelter right here. Oh, I got a bite, Jay. I got a big one. This is a big one. Holy, I'm telling you. Oh, yo, that's shiny. Wait. Wait, that's actually so nice. Wait, shiny wishy-washy, 23 fishies. I knew this was a big one. 
It's not big in the way you thought. Really solid shiny and will help us a lot in this next trial. I'm gonna give this little girl a 7 out of 10. Definitely better than the original and we give it the name Youngblood. Best evolves into Bulldor and I really like this guy. I'm gonna give him a solid 7 out of 10, but it's definitely not better than the original. We change up the team a bit in preparation for the next trial and while we're training, we find yet another third. They're definitely, they're- Oh, yo, what? Shiny Picky Peck. Wait, that looks so cool. I wasn't specifically hunting for a shiny, but I'm gonna allow myself to catch any shiny we find that isn't a duplicate, as long as we aren't specifically hunting for it. I really like the green. It stands out a lot more than the original shiny, so it's definitely better. Gonna give this cute little guy an eight out of 10. Chad gives it the name Joker, but not even a three minutes later. Oh wait, yo, what the heck? Again? Two shinies, one training session? Yeah, another shiny bird. I like this more than the original and I'm gonna give it a 7 out of 10. We give it the name Jasperetta and now we can finally go back to training without any interruptions. We head to the next trial. Here we are required to memorize dances, fight a Marowak and a hacker and then take on the Totem Marowak who has its speed sharply boosted. We led with Tanline who was already injured from a previous battle in the trial and we get taken out with a brick break. We switch into Youngblood who goes big. I really like this form. The Marowak SOS calls in the Salazzle, the Totem goes for Detect, and we set up Rain Dance, and then the Salazzle hits us with Torment. Next turn, we take a Venoshock and a Brick Break before almost one-shotting this Totem with a Rain Boosted Brine. I decide not to take any risks and sacrifice Youngblood so we can safely switch into Blue Brain. The Totem uses Detect, we take a Flame Burst and go for Bulldoze that one-shots the Salazzle. We tank a Brick Break and take down the Totem with another Bulldoze, and even though we lost two Pokemon, this is a win in my books. We earn the Fire Neum Z as proof of completing the Fire Trial, and we unlock the Flying Mount Charizard. I decided to use it to see what the Charizard looks like, and this thing is just a shiny crowbat. But I do really like it. We head towards the grass trial and did about 350 encounters in the grass and found nothing but dupes. But then I remembered that we could shiny hunt for the Wimpod instead and count that as this route's encounter. But I do decide to put that hunt on pause until later. We changed up the team once again to better fit this next trial, and whilst training, a few things happened. We had two evolutions Joker, who evolved into a disappointing shiny, 4 out of 10, and Mordecai, whose shiny looks great, 6 out of 10. But also, this happened. How are we, Dahlia? How was work? Oh, wait. Uh, wait. Either way, we catch it, and I gotta give this thing a 6 out of 10. It's a nice shiny, and it's better than the original, but it's not that great, you know? Right as we're finishing up training for the grass trial, Joker dies. And to be honest, I wasn't really paying attention. Once we finish training, we begin our next trial, which requires us to collect ingredients from the lush forest for a stew. But there's a chance the ingredients you take are from a Fromantis home, and if you choose to take the ingredients from their homes, one will chase after you and fight you at the very end. Of course, the first two ingredients we chose happen to be from Fromantis homes, and the last ingredient you have to take off of Sudowoodo, but there are fake Sudowoodo you can take from too. We scout the imposter and take the big roots from that one. We make the stew, and the first Fromantis rolls up on us, but Jasper had a one shot with Air Cutter. The second one comes, and also gets one shot. Once we finish the stew, the totem Lurantis smells it and attacks us. Its speed is sharply risen, and we live with Jasperetta, who takes an X Scissor before hitting it with a Growl. It then SOS's for a Kecleon. Because of the last Growl, we survive another X Scissor on 1 HP and hit both of the Pokemon with an Air Cutter, doing absolutely nothing. Kecleon takes us out with a Dizzy Punch, and we swap into Cherry. The Lurantis uses X Scissor again that does 3 damage, and we hit them both with an Air Cutter, barely doing any damage again, and the Kecleon sets up Sunny Day. Lurantis yet again goes for another X Scissor, and we hit a Crit Air Cutter on the Lurantis while chipping down the Kecleon before taking a super effective agent power. The Lurantis then uses Synthesis, healing it back up to full HP, four turns later of repeating the exact same thing, and Cherry eventually falls to an engine power. Thankfully now the Kecleon is in red HP, but since Lurantis has Synthesis, it's basically back at full HP. We send in Mordecai and take an X Scissor before killing the Kecleon with Flame Charge. Next turn it hits us again, but our Flame Body activates and burns a Totem Pokemon, and we also chip it down with Flame Charge. It then SOSs for a Comfey, we hit the Totem with a Flame Charge, it heals with Synthesis, and Comfey uses Flower Shield to raise the Totem's defense. Now to be honest, I'm just gonna save you 10 minutes worth of a battle and say we eventually took them both out, but that battle dragged on for so long for absolutely no reason. 9,000 years later and we finally received the Grass Neum Z as proof of completing the trial. But we stay in the lush jungle to get our next encounter. After 222 encounters, we find our first shiny sinister Pokemon. Like if I did another video, a completely new thing. Oh, yo, we got a shiny sinister! Wait, no way! If you haven't seen the last custom shiny video, 
basically sinister Pokemon, are different versions of normal Pokemon, sort of like regional variants. They have different movesets, typing, and appearance. We give it the name Wither Rose, do a bunch of story stuff, evolve Lemonade to Jolteon, and I like this little guy. You gotta give him a 7 out of 10 in my opinion, it is better than the original. We then grab our fossil from the shop, but I'm not gonna tell you which one it is until we find it shiny. Once again, we change up the team to prep for the Island Kahuna Olivia, who specializes in wrong type Pokemon. We head into Memorial Hill to get our next encounter, and while we're hunting, we get sniped by this grandma. She sends out this Furfru, and I don't even want to go over this battle because it hurts so much, so let me just show you the team afterwards. I don't want to talk about it, and I'm gonna have nightmares about this Pokemon for the rest of my life. We place the Fallen into the dead box that's becoming a bit packed. We fill up the team again and go back to shiny hunting as we desperately need a new team member. 100 encounters later and we find this spooky monster. Oh, Shiny Ghastly 100. I think that's 100 encounters flat, actually. That's actually really... Yeah, that is... What a nice shiny. That actually looks really solid, okay? This looks cool. Nice take on the shiny, and I gotta give it an 8 out of 10, but I don't think it's better than the original. We give it the name Teddy Bear. We also get our encounter in Nicholas Cave, where after a whopping 380 encounters later, we redeem ourselves. I comment on the... Oh, Shiny! Freaking Alolan Diglett 380 encounters! Now that we actually caught this thing, I can rate it. Gotta give it a 6 out of 10 to be honest. It doesn't really change that much and it's not any better than the original. Chat gives it the name Digdug and we once again adjust the team to fit it as best as we can against some rock types. We train everybody up to level 30 and during the process, Dig Dug evolves. The black hair is cool, but that only ups it to a 7 out of 10. However, Teddy Bear evolves into a Haunter and then again into a Gengar. In this game, trade evolution Pokemon evolve via level up. The Haunter is cool and deserves a 7 out of 10, but this black and purple Gengar deserves at least a 9 out of 10. This is completely better than the original Shiny, but is anybody really surprised? We head towards where we can fight Olivia and I completely forgot that we had a Plume Arena fight here and for some reason she has a Pyroar and a Gold. It? No BB dealt with both of them, but it's weird to see her team change completely. Now for the Island Kahuna. Olivia leads with Anorith, and we mistakenly lead with Autumn. So we switch into Dig Dug, who eats a Smackdown. We then hit it with an Earth Power doing half, and it hits us with a Bug Bite. It just barely survives another Earth Power on 1 HP, and we just barely live a Bug Bite on 1 HP. We take it down next turn, and next out is Lily, and I decide to sacrifice Dig Dug, so we stay in and hit a Sucker Punch before going down to a grind. We send out Teddy Bear and hit it with a Brick Break before taking an Agent Power. We hit another Brick Break, and it hits another Agent Power and one more Brick Break takes it out. Last out is Lycanroc, and here's my thought process. Gengar is also naturally faster than Midnight Form Lycanroc, so I'm thinking that we stay in and one-shot this Lycanroc before it can use its Z-move and win the battle. Yeah, we got outsped and one-shot by Bite. We swap into No BB, go for Baby Doll Eyes to weaken the power of its Z-move, and No BB absolutely eats it. I hope you guys understand why we almost lost to this Pokemon earlier. True Grass Nuts later, and we take Lycanroc down, winning the battle and defeating our second island Kahuna. Before we head off the island, we do our island skin encounter, which is a Honage that can be found on Route 9. After 114 encounters, we find our target. It's weird because the like, oh, 144 encounter shiny Honage. That looks so nice. I really like this. I don't think it's better or worse than the original as they're both great takes on a shiny. And I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Chat gives him the name Pika Bleu. We then meet up with Faba, go to the Aether Foundation, found this jellyfish coming out of the sky as he kill it, head over to Ula Ula Island, and jump into a rival battle against how completely unprepared. He leads with Brion and we leave with Psychosis, and we hit it with a Psybeam, causing it to be confused and smack itself turn 1. We hit another Psybeam before taking a Bubble Beam, and one more Psybeam is enough to take it out. Next up is Flareon, and we switch into Fast, who takes a bite. We take yet another bite before two-shotting with Rock Blast. Then comes out Alolan Raichu, so we switch into no BB and take a Thunderbolt that does exactly half. Next turn it goes for Tail Whip for some reason, and we one-shot it with a critical hit bite. How then sends out Noibat and we hit a headbutt doing about 70% and Noibat uses agility, which means next turn we eat an air cutter before taking it out. Last out is Tauros and we switch into fire hoping to predict a normal move, but it goes for workup. Terrified of losing fire, we swap back into no BB who eats a payback. I go for baby doll eyes to lower his attack and we live another payback back on 4 HP. I decide that this is the end of the line for no BB, and I try to go for a headbutt, but we got outsped and fall to another payback. We send out Autumn who has an Eviolite which raises our defenses by 50%. The Tauros goes for workup and we chip it down with Razor Leaf doing about a quarter. After chipping it down a little bit more, it goes for rest which puts it to sleep and heals it back to full HP. We chip it down again and it wakes up and goes for rest again and this happened three times before we eventually take it out. After the battle, Fast evolves into a Gigalith, and although this isn't as good as the original Shiny, I think it is a really good take on it, and I'm gonna give it a 7 out of 10. We add no BB to the death box and add Lemon back to the team before we head into Mali Garden, where after only 14 encounters, we find our Shiny. Oh! 
Oh my god! Fortune encounter shiny Ragwinid! Wait, that looks so the orange is so cool. It's not purple. Purple's my favorite color. Purple's my favorite color, so it's not purple. But this thing looks sick. As you can tell, I really like this shiny. Once again, not better than the original, but I do really like it. I am only going to give it a 6 out of 10 though, and Chad decides to give it the name Hexbug Nano. We do some more story stuff and head to the outer cape of Mali City, where only after 11 encounters, we find... Punch it. Oh! Okay, listen, listen, I don't like this Pokemon. I don't like this Pokemon, but damn, that is a nice shiny. This is a great shiny. I'm gonna give it a 9 out of 10, and I think it's better than the original in every single way. Cat gives it the name Petrol. We hit south to Route 11 and end up doing a double battle against these two trainers. We lead with Cantoni and Muck and a Bulbasaur, and we lead with Psychosis and Hexbug Nano. We switch Hexbug Nano for Fire, and Psychosis takes on Muck with a Psychic. Bulbasaur goes for Double Edge on Psychosis, and they send out a Sinister Teddy Ursa. Bulbasaur dies to a Psychic from Psychosis and the Teddy Urza takes down fire with a faint attack. It didn't really register into my brain that this thing was a dark type. Venusaur comes out and we send out Autumn. We switch out Psychosis and fear of losing it, and Hexbug Nano comes back out to take its place. Otto eats a takedown and chips the Venusaur down with a pluck and tanks a faint attack from the Teddy Urza. Hexbug Nano takes a takedown the next turn from the Venusaur before Autumn kills it with pluck, and the Teddy Urza takes down Hexbug Nano with a crit faint attack. We swap in fast and he takes it down with a rock slide, but we've really lost two Pokemon to this little bear. However, Autumn evolves into an amazing looking Decidueye, 10 out of 10, and I actually like this more than the original. We add to the death box, refill up the team, and go back to Route 11 to get another shiny. It only took 26 encounters till we find this little guy. You know why? Because the people don't take good care of them. Like the workers. And... Oh... 26 encounters, shiny Komala. Look at that little guy. Look at that little guy. He's so cute. Way better than the original, and I'm gonna give this cutie a 7 out of 10. We give him the name Koala Hulk. We then head to Route 10 where we can get yet another encounter. 175 is our encounter count for this route's shiny monster. Oh my god, I just spoke it into existence! Shiny Ariadne 175 encounters, yo! Barrage, welcome onto the stream, homie. That looks nice. I like that. That looks beautiful. Look at that pocket monster right there. Chad didn't really like this shiny more, but I prefer it over the original. I really like this shiny. 9 out of 10. Chad names her Gregory. We head up to the top of Mount Hakulani, where we can find yet another shiny Pokemon. No. -uh. No. Ah, it's a shuckle. Are you kidding me? 296 encounters for a shuckle. Not too happy about this one. Don't really like this Pokemon, but the shiny is a pretty good shiny. 6 out of 10. Now it's time for the soft reset shinies. We can soft reset for the Wimpod back in Akala Island. I drive to work still, huh? Nice. Oh! Wait, 36, 37 encounter shiny Wimpod? Wait, that was so fast. It's not a great shiny, but it isn't bad either. But it is worse than the original, so I'm gonna give it a 7 out of 10. I decide to name her Meepy. Next we can reset for the gift totem Marowak. After 18 resets, we get our first totem shiny. Oh my god, it's so quickly! 18 encounters! Oh my god! Dude, what? Now, this thing looks insane, and the custom fire on its bone is nuts. 9 out of 10 easily, and I think it is way better than the original. I give it the name Shadow. This is when I realized that the Fossil Restoration Center is in Akala Island and not on Ula Ula Island. So after 104 resets, we find our shiny fossil. <gasps> Yo! Wait, shiny, shiny Kranidos. That actually looks nice. I actually really like this, and I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. I give it the name Slime. Last encounter for this segment of the video. I know we've done a lot, but I had to save the best for last. Oh, you're not, you're just not watching this stuff. <gasps> oh, wait, no, no, that looks amazing. Oh my God. That looks beautiful 65 encounters that looks amazing oh my god this would be like the best shiny of all time if it was real oh my god
This might be just a little bit biased because I absolutely love this Pokemon, but come on, look at this thing. It's easily a 10 out of 10 shiny, and even though the original is in my top 3 favorite shinies of all time, this one is better. As per every Lurantis I find, I named her Lulu. We changed the team up a bit to prep for the next trial, which requires us to make the letter Z with some Charger Bugs and fight a few Pokemon. This totem is a Totem Togedemaru with its physical defense sharply raised. We lead with Shadow and it goes for Spiky Shield turn 1, so we can't hit it with Will-O-Wisp. It then SOS as a Skarmory. Next turn, the totem goes for Bounce, which causes us to miss Will-O-Wisp again, and the Skarmory sets up Stealth Rocks. Third time's the charm, and after getting hit by a Bounce and Torment, we hit the Togedemaru with Will-O-Wisp to burn it. The Togedemaru then goes for Bounce again, and we take a Steel Wing before hitting the Skarmory with a Flame Charge. Because of Torment, we can't go for Flame Charge again, so we get hit with a Bounce and try to hit the Skarmory with a Will-O-Wisp, but we miss, and the Skarmory sets up Tailwind. The Togedemaru then hits us with a Zing Zap, and the Skarmory hits us with Steel Wing, dropping us down to 6 HP, and of course we have to flinch. We switch into Pika Bleu, who eats an Iron Head and a Steel Wing. We get some chip damage down on both of the Pokemon before switching into Gregory, who gets taken down from the two Pokemon before it even has a chance to fight. Petrol comes out next and takes an Iron Head and gets hit with a Torment before going for Minimize, hoping to stall turns and chip down the Totem with Burn Damage. We take an Iron Head, bringing us down to Red HP, and dodge a Steel Wing before hitting the Skarmory with a knockoff, chipping it down. Petrol had to be sacrificed here and falls to a Zing Zap. We then send out Autumn, who finishes off the Totem Pokemon and the Skarmory with an Ominous Wind. We get the Electronium Z as proof of completing this trial, add yet two more Pokemon to the death box and change up the team a bit to prep for the first encounter with Guzma, the boss behind Team Skull. He leads with Glissapod and we lead with Lemon since Glissapod is a water type, I assumed we would outspeed and one shot since Jolteon is one of the fastest Pokemon out there. Yup, didn't see that one coming. We switch into Psychosis, and it fails a Sucker Punch since we set up Reflect. It will go for Sucker Punch until it runs out of PP. So we use Sand Attack until it eventually goes for Razor Shell, and then hit it with a Psychic doing over 50% of its health, which triggers its ability Emergency Exit, which causes the Pokemon to switch out. Larvesta comes out, and we switch into Shadow, who takes it down with a couple Shadow Bones. Glissapod comes back out, and we switch into Pika Bleu, predicting a Razor Shell, but it does more than I thought it would. And we switch into Autumn, since it should be out of Sucker Punch PP, and it can only go for Razor Shell, right? Oh, you son of a lovely individual, Guzma. I hope you have the... That sucks. Why do you still have Sucker Punch PP? I thought you used... Do you still have more? Guess we didn't waste all of Sucker Punch's PP. We take it down with a Psychic next turn, winning us the battle. And of course, to add insult to injury, after Kukui gives us the Decidium Z, which is a Z crystal exclusively used for Decidueye. Our dead Decidueye. Thanks. We place Lemon and Autumn in the dead box. May they both rest in peace. We reach Route 12, where we can get the Mudsteel Pager, and I don't really like the colors of this one, or the Pokemon itself, to be honest. But we do get to begin our next shiny hunt. 87 encounters later, and we find Mossy Cobblestone? Anyways, I want to hunt him. Oh! Okay! <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Funny enough, I said I didn't want a Graveler, and lo and behold, we got a Graveler. Honestly, I like this shiny. It's way better than the original and deserves a 7 out of 10. Jag gives it the name Mossy Cobble, which I absolutely love. Heading north, we can reach Blush Mountain, where after 80 encounters, we can find our next shiny. Oh! Literally first speed up encounter. That's crazy. Shiny elected! 80 encounters? I wasn't sure about how to feel about this shiny at first, but it's actually pretty cool. I'm gonna give this little guy 7 out of 10, and in my opinion, it is 1000% better than the original. Chad gives us the name Plugin, and we head east of Route 12, enter Route 13, which leads us to the Tapu Village, where if we head north to Route Lanakila, we can find a frozen little man after 244 encounters. Oh! Shiny! Shiny! Male Storm Run, 244 encounters. That's a nice shiny though, I gotta admit, that is a nice shiny. That's nice. It is a male, so we can't evolve it into a Frostlass, but overall, this is a pretty good shiny, and I like it more than the original. We gotta give this guy an 8 out of 10. And we give it the name Frostlassen. Then we decide to evolve Plug-In by running around until it's maxed out in happiness. Yeah, this shiny kind of sucks. 4 to 10, thumbs down. Way worse than the original. I then realized that we can get an encounter in Tapu Village, and I was really bummed out that we got a male Snorunt instead of something cooler like a female one or an Alolan Vulpix, so I was really hoping we'd find something better here. After 209 encounters, this happens. Oh, that looks so nice! 209 encounters, shiny Vulpix! Oh my... Look at it! Oh my... God! 209 encounters! That looks beautiful! Are you kidding me? 
Oh, we got it, chat. We got it. Just look at this. How can you not love this thing? 10 out of 10, better than the original. What more can I say? Chat gives it the name Ziplove, which I thought was pretty creative until I realized later that it's just Vulpix backwards. We then decided to do a bit of training since I thought we had the Gladion fight next, whose weakest Pokemon is level 42. So I figured we'd get the squad up to that level. During that process, we had a bunch of evolutions, starting with Slime, who evolves into a pretty solid looking Rampardos. Gonna give this a six out of 10. Next up is Meepy. This was pretty disappointing and it's not that different. So I'm only gonna give it a four out of 10. Next up is Mossy Cobble, also kind of a mesh shiny, but it shoots green rocks at the top and I think that's pretty cool. So it gets a five out of 10. For us last, it evolves into Golali and this thing actually looks pretty cool. Seven out of 10. Last but definitely not least, we have all plug in. Talk about Redemption Arc. This is beautiful. Easily a 9 out of 10. We also gave a couple mons some name changes, but thankfully we haven't used any of these Pokemon much, if at all, yet, so it isn't that big of a deal. Chad just had some banger names. We changed Mossy Cobble to P Golden Cannon. We changed Meepy to Goo Uzma, and we changed Slime to Radiant. I then realized that we do have to do the Ghost Trial first, and a lot of our Pokemon are now pretty overleveled. But Chad and I agreed that we would just lower the team's level to match the totem's level, so we dropped the team to level 35 and jumped into the trial. This trial required us to take pictures of unexpected dead people and eventually we get lured into the back rooms by the trial girl where Mimikyu is and decides to throw hands. We leave with fast for a specific reason. After taking a play rough we go for rock blast which is a multi-hitting move and therefore can break through disguise and do some extra damage. And then I call for a Binet. Mimikyu goes for a play rough but it misses and the Binet hits us with a will-o-wisp burning us before we hit a rock slide. Sadly since we're burned our attack is halved and this does very little damage. We take a play rough dropping us down to 25 HP and the Binet goes for curse. We use rock slide and take out the Binet but unfortunately the curse finishes off fast. We switch into Radiant and the Mimikyu SOSs for a Jellicent as its second Pokemon. We go for Assurance, a move that doubles on power if the user gets hit that turn and since we're pretty slow, we should get that double damage. Wait! That's crazy. We were holding a quick claw and of course it pops. Because of this, Mimikyu lives and hits us with a play rough, doing well over half. Luckily, the Jellicent goes for Nightshade and we just barely live. We switch into Frost Lassen, who takes a play rough and a water pulse, just barely surviving. And we try to attack, but we get outsped and taken out with a play rough. Plugin comes in, knocking out the Mimikyu and just barely taking out the Jellicent. Oh, of course, we take it on next turn. And that's the Ghost Trial completed. On the way out, we get challenged by this random Fisher, and usually these battles are ridiculously easy. For whatever reason, this guy leaves with a Crobat and has higher level Pokemon than the Totem itself. We lead Radiant, who's still injured from last fight, so we switch into P Golden Cannon, who takes a Leech Life with E. Next turn, we get hit with a Mean Look, which means we can no longer switch Pokemon, and we go for Thunder Punch. It heals a bit with Leech Life, and we set up South Rocks, as I have no idea what else could come out, but I am scared. And the next turn, it goes down to a Thunder Punch, and the Fisher sends out a Dragalge. We lose P Golden Cannon to a Water Pulse, and we switch into Plug In to hit a Thunder Punch that barely does anything as it sets up double team. So we set up light screen as it goes for double team again and a few thunder punches later we do take it out but this random boss battle has one more Pokemon left, Alolan Muck. We hit it with a thunder punch and it takes us out with a knockoff. The Woozma comes out and takes it out but it's nice to know that I now need to live in fear of the most random trainers. Not to mention we have a series of hard battles coming up very soon. We almost fill up our death box since this game is oh so easy. We fill up the team once again to take on Plumerina but she was light work. I then bench Shadow and put Pika Blur back on the team and after a bit of training he evolves into a really solid looking dual blade. I honestly cannot wait to see what this thing looks like fully evolved but we have to make it to the last island before we can get a Dusk Stone. You see this guy? Yeah, he has one Pokemon. A Mantine. No problem, right? Our entire team kinda gets walled by this. Oh no, now we... Quick... Claw. I'm not looking. Chat, don't look. Everybody look away. Everybody look away. Everybody look away. I was hoping for a lucky quick claw pop, but nope. And I don't want to talk about the rest. We reach Route 16, which means a new encounter. And after 287 encounters, we get our next custom shiny. You put it back in your 3DS, you launch something, and then you... Shiny Slowpoke 278, yo! That looks so cool. This is an amazing shiny and way better than the original. This deserves an eight out of 10 and we give it the name Big Mant. I kind of use my big brain here. Now that we have a Slowpoke, Route 15 has nothing but duplicate encounters and therefore we can get a shiny somewhere else as a replacement. But first we gotta go back to the ghost trial since I completely forgot this is a new area and therefore we can get a new shiny. Only 67 encounters later, we got our spooky shiny. Away from a custom shiny. But that shiny, whoa. Six 
67 encounters? Hot take. I really like this. Honestly, more than the original. Easily deserves a 9 out of 10 in my opinion, and Chad gives it the name Poutine. I decided to use ChadGPT to choose where we get our duplicate encounter, but it kept giving us areas that we didn't have access to, like the desert. But eventually, it gave us Brooklyn Hill, and 163 encounters later... A new idea. You figure out how to do it, and then I... Yo, shiny squirtle 163. Now this is a good shiny. Better than the original by far. And this low man gets an 8 out of 10. Speaking of low man, that's the name we give him. We run up ChatGPT again since we have another duplicate encounter for the route outside the ghost trial and we get Volcano Park. So we head over there and after 151 encounters, we get the luckiest shiny of the video. Yeah, and then it had, you know, it's also... Please be female. Oh my god, it's female. No way. Shiny female slanted. Oh my, that is insane. 151. Yo, that's a crazy number. If you don't already know, only female Salandit can evolve, and there's only a 12% chance for a Salandit to be female. This shiny itself doesn't change much from the original, but it is still a good shiny, and I'm gonna give it a 7 out of 10. We give it the name Cheesecake. Chat then reminds me that we haven't gotten a Crep Brawler yet, and in my opinion, this is considered a static encounter, so we fly back to the first island and just do the runaway method to do that, but it's... 19 encounters, shiny Crep Brawler, that was fast as... I like this shiny more than the original to be honest. It's not great, but it does deserve a 7 out of 10, and Chad gives him the name Monster Energy. Now it's time to do a bunch of evolutions, starting with Monster Energy. Red to orange, that's really the only difference, and I'm kind of disappointed, so I'm only going to give it a 4 out of 10. We then evolve Low Man twice. You saw this one coming. Not bad, not great. It definitely stands out more, so 6 out of 10. Next up, Cheesecake. I love this. The purple is such a nice touch, not too different from the original, but they just took a great shiny and made it even better in my opinion. 9 out of 10. We then jump to Route 17, where we find Nightmare Fuel. The fact that they gave it one is crazy, but... What is wrong with you? Ew! What is wrong with you? You poor troubled boy. Yeah, I don't even want to rate this. We give it the name Emo, moving on. On our way to Poe Town, we encounter this grunt. And I don't know what this haunter was on, but he took out Poutine and could have cleaned up a lot more of our team had we not outsped with Psychosis. Since we lost Poutine, we put this thing back on the team and level him up a bit. During the process, he evolves and thank God, they got rid of the god awful eyes. Now this is a nice shiny and deserves a 7 out of 10. Afterwards, we make it to Poe Town, clear up a bunch of grunts, and we also grab an ice stone so we can evolve Ziplop later down the line. Right as we're about to take on Guzma, I do a 180 and run back to the Pokemon Center where I bench Cheesecake and Guzma. Why you ask? Because I have a channel point redemption in my stream where Chad can make me bench a Pokemon until after the next big fight, and I swear they planned to make this happen. Since we were back here though, I decided to evolve Ziplop rather than waiting till later, and my reaction says it all. That's what I'm talking about, baby. That is a custom shiny if I have ever seen one. 10 out of 10 easily. And although I do like the original shiny, this one is way better. We also evolved Mordecai. Not a huge fan, like kind of at all, to be honest. I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10. And I think the original is much better. But back to what I was saying, as soon as we got back to Poe Town and made it all the way up to literally steps before we challenged Guzma, someone else claims bench a Pokemon, which means I got to go all the way back just to bench Mordecai. So we lost half the team I plan on using to take on Guzma, and we have to replace them with other random monsters. But finally, we can actually take this man on, as he leads Glissopod and we leave with Psychosis. But then we switch into Minty, and he gets dropped down to half with first impression. I was expecting much more of a tank from him. We sacrifice it next turn so we can safely swap in a shadow, as Minty is useless. We burn it with will o -Wisp, which allows us to live our next Razor Shell, and then we can switch into Lulu, predicting another Razor Shell. But he gets a defense drop on us. We take a Sucker Punch and hit it with a Leaf Blade, chipping it down, and on top of the burn chip, this triggers its ability emergency exit and sends out Scyther. So we switch into Pika Blur and it goes for double team. After switching, I remember that Scyther probably knows the Night Slash. So I switch in a shadow and sacrifice it so we can safely switch into Ziplo. Scyther goes for double team, which causes us to miss Ice Beam. Next turn, we take an X Scissor and miss again. And then we get hit with another X Scissor and finally hit an Ice Beam, dropping it below half. Thankfully, we don't miss our next Ice Beam and take out the Scyther. Next out is Larvesta and we switch into Psychosis who takes a Flame Charge. I didn't think it 
would outspeed us even though it was at plus one but it does and we just barely live a bug bite before taking it down with psychic we swap into lulu because i need to keep psychosis alive and lulu goes down to a first impression it was my favorite shiny we swap into psychosis and i was going to stall out sucker punch pps so i go for sand attack and it fails a sucker punch i go for reflect and it goes for razor shell instead of sucker punch but psychosis does go down i swap in a pika blur eat a sucker punch and ship it down with shadow claw and the burn takes it down i won't lie i was panicking for a lot of this battle and it did cost us four pokemon but if i just went with the team i wanted to use and chat didn't make me bench three counters i had for his team we would have been fine moving on however we make our second death box which i am not proud of add the fallen where they belong and fill up our team once again big man also evolved and i like this shiny it is better than the original and i think it deserves a 7 out of 10. we then head into high nut desert to get our next encounter and after 142 encounters this happened the, the 500 encounter things oh yo my man he looks spicy 142 encounters shiny karak karak okay that looks pretty nice but you could argue is legit like it's based off a of preference whether you consider some things legit or not but um you know if it's not if it's on an emulator i don't consider it real <gasps> no Moving on, Gladion challenges us to a battle out of anger. He leads with Golbat and we leave with Ziplove. He hits us with a Venoshock doing half and we just almost take it out with an Ice Beam. Since a Venoshock will kill us next turn, we swap in a Big Mant. He then hits a Leech Life doing well over half and the Golbat heals a bit of HP, but Zen Headbutt is still enough to take it out. Next up is Type Null, but I know this is actually a Zoroark, so we switch into Monster Energy and take a Night Daze that drops our accuracy and cause us to miss our next move. And then he then hits us with a U-turn, dropping us down to 12 HP, where he also swaps into the real Type I tried to attack because I assumed it would go for Pursuit here, but it takes us out with a Double Edge. We swap into Cheesecake and Toxic hit first to boost our Venoshock's power, but we also get one shot by Double Edge. Kuzma comes down and hits a first impression before taking a Double Edge, but the Type Null killed itself with Recoil. Warwark comes back out and hits us with a Foul Play, triggering our ability, forces us to switch into Ziplove, who takes another Foul Play before taking the Zoroark down with the Dazzling Gleam. Since we've lost a lot of Pokemon in the past like 5 minutes, we decided that it's time to do our Island Scan. That votes that we do Primplup, so we start hunting and 457 encounters later we find our target i appreciate you popping in oh 457 shiny primp up somebody literally said it was gonna be green somebody in chat said it was green i don't remember who it was because it was before the power went out but whoever said it you're insane bro i don't really like this shiny the green in my opinion is disgusting and this thing is only getting a four out of ten and that's me being generous however chat gives it a very clever name of meanie greenie which i absolutely love all right afterwards we evolve meanie greenie and the shiny isn't too bad but it still isn't all that i then realized that we can get one more pokemon the gift totem vikavol chat with us like you oh 61 encounter shiny vikavol that looks really 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 good actually i wasn't expecting it to go that route but i like it I I really like the shiny and it deserves at least an 8 out of 10, but I don't think it's better nor worse than the original. And despite the fact that this is a great Pokemon and a good shiny, chat gives it the name Trash 2.0. Now it's Island Kahuna time. We challenge Nanu and he leads with Sableye and we leave with Ziplove. It flinches us with a fake out, but next time we drop it down to a quarter HP with Dazzling Gleam before getting hit for exactly 100 damage with a critical hit power gem. We take it out next turn and next out is Alolan Persian, so we switch into Emo who eats a power gem that does absolutely nothing. We take another one and it just barely survives a brick break but we take it down next turn and we get an attack boost from moxie but then he sends out a croc rock with intimidate which lowers our attack stat so that was for nothing it hits us with a swagger confusing us and we hit ourselves in confusion so we switch into trash 2.0 predicting an earthquake which does no damage because of levitate it swaggers us again but we break through the confusion and take it out with a bug buzz winning us our island kahuna battle now we have to break into the aether foundation since they kidnapped lily and are up to some shenanigans after maneuvering around the dock area dodging trainers left and right we meet up with how and Gladion to take the elevator up where Faba is waiting for us. However, he only has a Hypno and Guzma one-shots it. We then get sent down to the lower area where we have to check out the labs where we can take on a bunch of researchers. We're dead if you live. Cover your eyes, chat. Oh, dude, 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 chat. Can you, can you guys, dude, the stream's lagging, bro. No way. Are you kidding me? The stream's really lagging now of all times. Now, right before carrying on, I travel all around the Alola region collecting more stickers until we have enough to get our fourth gift totem Pokemon, Mimikyu. And I must say, I was impressed. It, it all depends on the situation. Obviously, I don't know as much as- Yo, we got it! 147, it's back, baby! 
Yes, sir. Look at that shiny chat. Look at that shiny. Shiny totem monster Mimikyu. What a great looking shiny. To be honest, I like this more than the original, but they are both amazing shinies, and I'm gonna give this a 9 out of 10. Chat gives it the name Pinkachu. We put this bad boy on our team, defeated some more Aether Associates, fought some Team Skullgrunts, and then took on Guzma. And I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. We lost. We whited out. His team was stacked with some really good mons, Glissapod, Caesar, Vikavolt, and even a Volcarona. His team also has perfect EVs and IVs, and we just have some silly sparkly monsters. That being said, rather than giving up, Chat and I decided to keep trying until we eventually did win and accept the fact that we didn't beat the Nuzlocke. We would still apply the Nuzlocke rules going forward, but to be honest, we weren't even sure if it was possible to win with the Pokemon we have. After 50 minutes, yes, 5 zero minutes of trying over and over and over, we finally did win. Guzma leads with Galissapod and we lead with Trash 2.0. We take a first impression, which we just barely hang on from, and we miss a Zap Cannon and die next turn. Yeah, we somehow still won this despite the fact our first Pokemon did nothing. We send in Koala Hulk and it fails a Sucker Punch as we hit it with Yawn, and then next turn it does hit us with a Sucker Punch as we chip it down with Thrash. As it sleeps, we hit it again, triggering Emergency Exit, and Caesar gets dragged out, who takes us down with a Storm Throw. We send in Mordecai and do about 6 65% with a flame charge before getting one shot by Stone Edge. Pika Blur then comes out and takes the throat chop before taking down the scissor with a shadow claw. Gazma then sends out Volcarona and we switch into Pinkachu and it breaks her disguise with flamethrower. Next turn we set up light screen and it uses Whirlwind switching out Pinkachu for Guzma. We tank a flamethrower before one shotting it with Razor Shell. His own Vikavolt comes out and we trip it down with Thunder Punch and get hit with a Thunderbolt. This triggers our ability allowing us to sickly switch into Pika Blur who then hits a shadow claw and takes a Thunderbolt and then next turn we die to a critical hit Thunderbolt. RIP Pikabla. Guzma comes back out and takes down the Vikavolt with a first impression. And last out is Guzma's Galissapod, so we switch in a Pinkachu hoping to save Guzma. His Galissapod wakes up as expected and barely does any damage with first impression. Pinkachu then goes for Shadow Claw, which just barely takes it out. And we take a Razor Shell living on 9 HP. Next turn, we outspeed and take down Guzma's last Pokemon. Again, we have lost this Nuzlocke. The show must go on, however, and we go back to the Pokemon Center, adding the Fall into the Box and fill up our team once again. We head further into the Aether Paradise and find out that Lusamine is a freak with frozen Pokemon. Seriously, what is this? We have to take her on in battle to prove our strength and she leads with Clefable as we lead with Meanie Greenie. We trade hits until eventually Meanie Greenie falls, but we drop Clefable to about half HP. We send out Lil Man and drop Clefable pretty low before Lusamine switches out for Lilligan. I swapped into Guzma thinking we'd take a Petal Dance, but I mixed that move up with Petal Blizzard, so we swap back into Lil Man and sacrifice it so we can safely swap back into Guzma and one-shot it with First Impression. The Punny is out next and I don't want to see a damn comment about this thing. We switch out Emo, who takes a Thunder Punch and a Dizzy Punch before doing about 70% of its HP with a Brick Break. Lucy then swaps in Clefable, who gets taken out with a Brick Break. Beware comes out and we sacrifice Emo and let it go down with a Drain Punch. We send out Big Man, who gets a lucky Quick Claw Pop and almost takes down Beware with a Psychic, but it lives and hits us with a Takedown. We barely live another Takedown, but the Psychic does take down Beware. Lapani comes back out and takes down Big Man, so we swap in a Guzma to take it down with a First Impression. That's that is my Lodic, and all we've got is a Guzma who will go down a one shot from basically anything, and Pinkachu. So we switch out and it goes for Dragon Pulse which doesn't affect Pinkachu. Because of this, we still have our disguise up and this allows us to set up a free light screen next turn. Then, Milotic misses the next Hydro Pump and we hit a critical hit Shadow Claw. Next turn, we take a Hydro Pump and drop it below half with another Shadow Claw. Milotic then misses its next Hydro Pump again next turn and we take it down. Back to back rough battles, costing us 8 Pokemon, with Pinkachu and Guzma being the only survivors. Being the sore loser she is, Lusamine uses Cosmog to make the Sky OC appear, and Guzma jumps in last second to join her. After all of those events occur, we can finally make it to the last island, Pony Island, where since we just lost 8 Pokemon, I rushed over to get the Gift Aerodactyl, as I'll take any handout we can get. Thing. Oh! Yo, wait, this looks kind of fire. Hold on, 47 encounter, shiny Aerodactyl, baby. Banger shiny. I don't like it more than the original, but it still does deserve a 7 out of 10. We give it the name Skittles. We go to fill up the team and... Oh, this is all we've got left? Nice. We head into Pony Wilds where we can begin our next shiny hunt. 143 encounters later, we find our shiny. Well, I gotta add um, Noti Gangs after as well. Oh, yo, 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 wait, that is a banger. That is a banger of a shiny. That is beautiful. This is such an upgrade over the original shiny, and in my opinion, deserves at least a 7 out of 10. We each Ancient Pony Path shortly after, and we can do yet another shiny hunt. 448 encounters later. 
Oh, shiny Gramble 440 encounters. It's finally over. Yeah, th this is an all right shiny. Can't really do much with a Gramble because it's a Gramble. But I am going to give it a 6 out of 10. And we give her the name Banana James. Money Breaker Coast is up next. Where all we can get here is a 5% Lapras or a 25% Luminion. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, that is a shiny Luminion. That is not the Lapras we wanted, but that was 61 encounter shiny Luminion. Yeah, I ain't got much to say about this Pokemon. I'm gonna keep it a buck. Yup, this thing. Fish. We then make it over to the Exeggutor Island since we need to obtain the Sun Flute to summon the legendary Pokemon. But since this is a new area, we get a new shiny. You'll you'll go to jail. Shiny Alolan Exeggutor 192? Okay. Okay. Blue shiny equals Asha Waves approval. Gotta give this an 8 out of 10, and we give this tall boy the name Christmas. After obtaining the Sun Flute, we then head back to Pony Wilds since we can get a special item here. But before we do, we need to defeat all of the trainers in the area. During that process, we battle this random ace trainer who has a full team of six. For the most part, we handled it, but we did lose Banana James and Christmas Tree during the process. However, they're new members of the team, and I don't really like the Pokemon themselves, so they don't even get their death explained. After defeating the rest of the trainers in the area, we can take on this dancer who has four or a choreo, and after defeating her, we can get the Focus Sash. This item makes it so when it's being held, it is impossible to be one shot killed from full HP. This will come in clutch later. We then decided to do our final island scan, and Chat and I agreed that Delphox would be the best choice for type coverage. Oh, we got that so fast! Oh my god! Six encounters? This is a cool shiny. Personally, I like it, but I don't like it more than the original. I am gonna give it a 7 out of 10 though, and Chad gives it the name Glamoroxy. Team Skull wants to be annoying one last time, and we have to take on five grunts all at once, but they're just grunts, so we breeze through them with no problem. We head into Vast Pony Canyon, but the cave is full of nothing but duplicate encounters, so we go back to Brooklyn Hill since you can find Togepi here. We really want to see a custom shiny Togepi, but then this happens. Oh, there, there's Dupider number three, duplicate number 10. Wow, that's like three within like 10 encounters. <gasps> no! Shiny Poliwag, 470 back to back encounters though. Can we talk about that? Although we didn't get a Togepi, a new team member is a new team member. And to be honest, this is a really good shiny. I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10. Chat gives it the name P-Ole and we evolve it into Poliwhirl, which is a decent shiny and also gets a seven out of 10. And we evolve it again into Poliwrath. It isn't that great of a shiny, but it gets a six out of 10. We make it through Vast Pony Canyon and at the very top, there are grass patches with completely different Pokemon. So we decide that we're gonna count this as a different area and do another shiny hunt. What do you encounters later mm, mm, yo that is fire 40 encounter shiny like rock yo can we talk about that yeah we love this shiny 10 out of 10 easily it's not better than the original but it is really really good he also gets the name john cena we can finally make it to the dragon trial which is on the way to the altar of the sun here we find a jangma o akama o and finally the totem pokemon kama o a lot of o's this pseudo legendary pokemon also gets an omni boost we lead with pikachu and it breaks our disguise with poison jab and we hit it with a play rough but it has a berry that reduces super effective fairy damage so it only does about 40 percent then sos is for a caesar predicting a bullet punch we switch into p or and the Kamau hits us with a poison jab poisoning us. Next turn, p all goes down from a thunder punch and the Caesar sets up light screen. We send out Glamoroxy who takes a dragon claw before chipping down the Kamau with a psychic and the Caesar hits us with an Excisor. I then try to switch out Glamoroxy but the Caesar has pursuit and therefore Glamoroxy falls. We swap into Skittles and it takes a bullet punch before going for a sky drop on the Kamau but the totem is too heavy. Sky drop doesn't work on Pokemon that are above the weight of 440 pounds which by the way Kamau only weigh 172 pounds normally since the move failed, the Koma O takes down Skittles with a Thunder Punch. The totem's too heavy? Are you kidding? What? What does that even mean? Yeah, as you could hear from my reaction, I wasn't too happy about this. Pikachu comes out and takes a bullet punch and poison jab and just barely hanging on finishes off the Kamau with play rough. We switch into Gawuzma, eat a bullet punch, and take the scissor down two turns later. And we've won the dragon trial, but I'm still salty about losing Skittles. We reach the altar of the sun and Lily had the moon flute on her. So when we go up and play the sun and moon flute, the power of anime happens and the legendary Pokemon appears. At the perfect time too, as the sky sea appears and we see Lusamine and Guzma fall out before Nagruzma comes out too. I have no fear though, for the legendary Pokemon Solgaleo is here to save us. Uh, oh, uh, uh, oh, oh. Well, since the legendary Pokemon couldn't beat Necrozma, surely us, a 10 year old shiny hunter, can defeat a Necrozma that fused with the legendary Pokemon. We leave with Pikachu hitting a Shadow Claw and doing about a third, and Necrozma breaks out of sky, so we swap into John Cena who eats a Psycho Cut. We hit a Crunch doing barely anything, and it heals with Roost. 
After a couple of turns, Pikachu comes out and hits a critical hit Shadow Claw, just barely taking it down, but next turn we take it out, so it's all good. Necrozma then just sinks into the floor, and it becomes nighttime in game. No more sun. Then we fly to the Pokemon Center at Rattata Tour Team. If you're a long term Pokemon fan, you probably know what's gonna happen. We go back to the Altar of the Sun, fly through the Sky Sea with Lunala, and find Necrozma hiding in one of the other worlds. We climb this very large tower, and there we find Necrozma. Something comes out of its nose, and it transforms into Ultra Necrozma. Canonically, a Pokemon that can challenge God itself, and we have to fight it. We challenge it to a battle, and we lead with fear. It hits us with a Dragon Pulse. We live on a 1 HP. Remember the Focus Sash? We hit it with Endeavor, a move that matches the opponent's HP with the user, dropping it down to 1 HP. Now normally for the rest of the strategy, you would use Quick Attack and take it down from here, but our rat doesn't know that, so we let it die and switch into Guzma and take it down with a Sucker Punch. The Charisma falls and Solgaleo returns to normal. It's not nighttime at home anymore either. The Ultra Recon tells us that its Poipole seems interested in us and that we get to take it, but not unless it's shiny, so we soft reset for it. And it isn't even that cold, bro. Oh my god, that was so fast. That was six encounters. That looks really nice. I really like the shiny. In my opinion, it is not better than the original, but this is still my favorite Ultra Beast, so I'm gonna give it an 8 out of 10. And chat gives it the name Fortnite. We head back to Alola, but now we've unlocked the ability to use the Ultra Wormholes as we please. For the encounters here, I'm going to allow myself to get one shiny per different Wormhole color, with a total of four. I'm also going to allow myself to get one shiny Legendary and a shiny Ultra Beast too. Now, I didn't count how many wormholes I did total, but it took us three hours to complete all of our encounters here. The first shiny we got was an Audino. Oh, shiny Audino? Really? Ew. Boo. That's our yellow encounter. We could have gotten Mewtwo, bro. Don't really like this shiny or this Pokemon. Six out of ten, and we name it Boo. Our second shiny was a sinister shiny on Mega. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, shiny, sinister, and mega. I was like, wait, that doesn't look like the normal one. That doesn't look like the normal one. Which looks really cool as is, but since it's a custom Pokemon, I can't really compare it to anything but I still think it deserves a 7 out of 10. We give her the name Seeker. Next, we end up in this yellow hole which has a Grout on, and chat decides that this should be the legendary Pokemon we shiny hunt for. And after 66 encounters, this happens. Is it Inglet? Oh! Cyan shiny Grout on 66 encounters! The green is cool, but I like the original shiny better, but I'm gonna give it a 6 out of 10. And chat gives it the name Shrek. And our last and final wormhole shiny. It's a version exclusive thing. Oh, that's a nice shiny Lombre. Okay. I mean, there's our encounter. This guy seems to make it into all of my videos. And truth be told, I've never liked this Pokemon. I do think the shiny is much better than the original. And despite me not liking it, I am going to give it a 7 out of 10. And of course, Mad Lad Tad is back. Since this Pokemon evolves via stone, we evolve it into Ludicolo. And yeah, it's meh. It's not great. 7 out of 10, I guess. Next up, we challenge Captain Mina. And she leads with a custom shiny Mawile. That looks pretty cool. We take a play rough and go for a knockoff, but it isn't holding an item. Then she swaps in a Rabombi and we miss a Hydro Pump, and then we switch in a Seeker who takes a Psychic and then falls to a critical hit Z move. You didn't really have much of a life, but RIP Seeker. Pinkachu comes out and takes two Dazzling Gleams before hitting a Pain Split, healing us up and chipping it down a bit. Next turn, I go for Light Screen, which allows us to barely live another one. And we go for Pain Split once again, chipping it down and gaining some HP back. Since it's been chipped down a bunch from Pain Split, Shadow Claw is more than enough to take it out. Mawile comes back out, so we swap in a Shrek who obliterates her Mawile and her last Pokemon Gramble with a little bit of setup and some Earthquakes. For winning, we get the pink petal. But now we have to collect petals from Elima, Malo, Yahweh, Sophocles, Nanu, and the Water Girl, who I forgot to write down. Before we do this, however, we remember that we didn't get our shiny Ultra Beast. After a poll, chat decides we should shiny hunt for Kartana, which is the second rarest Ultra Beast to find. While we were searching for Kartana, we agreed that we would check every Ultra Beast we found, whether it was shiny or not, but only allow ourselves to shiny hunt Kartana. This means that there was a one out of 100 chance that we can find another shiny but no matter what we will only soft reset for shiny kartana on our third wormhole this happened hear me out chat hear me out oh first encounter shiny guzzler no way wait okay that is shiny it didn't sparkle and i was like what the heck 
That's fire. That is fire. Okay, I know I said this was like Guzzlord, but it clearly isn't. I made a mistake. Don't flame me. But this shiny is fire. I don't think it's better or worse than the original, but I do think it deserves an 8 out of 10. And chat comes up with the amazing name P. Skeeto. We eventually did find Kartana, but what I didn't realize is that we have to fight two Kartana before we can catch our own. Afterwards, we can begin our soft reset hunt for a shiny Kartana. Yeah, it's just the short form that two put together. Oh, Shiny Cartona 16 encounters. We literally, if, if, if we got one more encounter later, it would have been 69. Are you kidding me? That looks nice though, chat. That looks nice. Now this is what you call an upgrade of a custom shiny. Did much change? Absolutely not. Did enough change to make it an amazing shiny? 1 million percent. 9 out of 10. And we give this beast the name Pineapple. This is the point when I realize I can buy a certain orb that makes a certain Pokemon turn into a certain form that makes it certainly more powerful. Observe. <laughs> of course it's a Grimer. Yes, you are our opponent. God. Oh my god. Die. Die. Damn, that felt good. Now, to be honest, I was expecting full teams of six for the pedal trials, but it's only teams of three, so I'm gonna sum them up really quickly. Iskita swept the Lima, Trek swept Malo. Ana just straight up gave us her pedal for free. She was probably scared of our legendary god of the land. Trek and Pinkachu dealt with Kiawe. Trek also dealt with Malane. Nanu didn't even fight us. I'm very confused because I'm pretty sure he's supposed to fight us, but I'll take another free pedal. Now that we've collected all seven pedals, we can take on the final totem of the game. Totem Rabambi, which gets a double Omni boost, raising all of its stats by two stages. This doubles every single one of its stats, putting it at a base stat total of 928. Now, just to give you an idea, the top three highest base stat total Pokemon are Mega Mewtwo X and Y and Mega Rayquaza with a base stat total of 780. This thing has 140 more stats than all of those Pokemon. Pokemon like the Primals, Kyogre, and Groudon only have a base stat total of 770. Ultra Necrozma has a base stat total of 700. 150, 100% Zygarde only has a base stat total of 708, and on top of all of that, if this thing wasn't strong enough already, it's a totem Pokemon, so it gets to SOS another Pokemon to make it a 2v1. Okay, enough complaining. Let's fight this thing. We leave with Pineapple, who just gets straight up outsped and one shot. I wasn't too pleased about this, but this definitely helped me understand what we're actually up against. We send out Shrek, since it has the type advantage, and I'm pretty sure the rest of our team would just get obliterated by this thing. Rubumbi also SOS as a Pelipper, who tries to set up Drizzle, but Desolent Land blocks it. Rubumbi then goes for Quiver Dance, boosting its special attack, special defense, and speed on top of the already double Omni Boost. We hit a Fire Punch on the Rubumbi, doing about 40% of its HP, and the Pelipper just goes for Stockpile. The Rubumbi sets up again with Quiver Dance, putting at plus four four speed, special attack, and special defense. But we get the luckiest high roll fire punch of our life and take it out. The Pelipper just keeps using stockpile, so we spam fire punches until we eventually take it out and we complete our last trial. This means next up is our grand trial against Hapu. We head over to Executor Island and challenge the final island Kahuna to a battle. Hapu leads with Golurk can we lead with Pinkachu who hits a Shadow Claw as Hapu sets up Stealth Rock. We take it down next turn and next out is Mudsdale who we chip down with a Play Rough and get the attack drop before having our disguise broken from Heavy Slam. Next turn we hit another Play Rough and we live on only 39 HP from a heavy slam. We switch into Shrek who eats a heavy slam, sets up with bulk up, tanks a Z move, and takes it out with an earthquake. Next up is Gastrodon and we swap into Mad Lad Tad who takes it down with a few grass knots. Hapu's last Pokemon Flygon comes out and we drop it down to red with two hydro pumps before switching into Guuzma. Hapu heals with a hyper potion, but first impression takes it down and we've officially beaten our last grand trial. On the way to the Elite Four, Gladion cuts us off and challenges us to a battle. He leads with Crobat and we leave with John Cena who eats a Venoshot because we set up Stealth Rocks and one shot it with Stone Edge. Gladion then sends out Lucario so we switch into Pinkachu. Ladion then switches into the fire type Savali, and we switch into Gawuzma to take a double edge before taking it out with liquidation. Lucario comes back out and hits us with a night daze, and my brain didn't realize that this was a Zoroark, so I switched into Shrek and I knock it up with a fire punch. Finally, the real Lucario comes out, and one fire punch is all it takes. After defeating Gladion, my boy lets out a smile. My man. We go out to the top of mountain Lanakila and decide that this is a new area as well, since it has a bunch of new Pokemon. So after 303 encounters, we find a shiny. When you hit a clip like that, so. 
Oh, shiny Absol, 302 encounters. Look at that shiny, chat. Look at that. Look at that Pokemon right there. That is a nice shiny. I'm a huge fan of this shiny. I love the purple, and it looks great on this Pokemon. 8 out of 10. And of course, I prefer it over the original since purple is my favorite color. Chad also gives it the name Dabzel. And then we head inside the cave to get another shiny. And if you thought getting three times over Oz was bad, this next hunt took 448 encounters. Oh, we got it. Shiny Sneasel, 448 encounters. Yo! Now, I'm not even gonna lie, this isn't even that great of a shiny, but I do really like it. And the green gem in the middle is such a nice touch. Not better than the original, but I'm only gonna give it a 7 out of 10 since it doesn't change that much. On a personal scale, I think it's 10 out of 10. Chad gives it the name one and only. Shout out that man. His music is amazing. We make our way through Victor Road until we come face to face with a weakened Necrozma. And of course, this means a new shiny hunt approaches us. Ooh, that dust locks us with. Oh! Never mind! Shiny Necrozma 43 encounters! Oh my god, never mind. I spoke too soon. This is a pretty solid shiny, and I do like it more than the original, so I'm gonna give it a 7 out of 10. We named it Cassiopa because I noticed that it has a star on its back, which I never knew before. We eventually make it to the Pokemon Center, and right before challenging the Elite Four, I travel across the Alola region to gather every TM I can find. During that process, I entered an area I had actually never known about, a cave in the Lush Jungle. This place has its own encounter table, with Pokemon like Salandit, Charmander, and Larvesta. Since there's some pretty cool Pokemon here, we stop and shiny hunt in this area, and after 141 encounters, we find this amazing shiny i think oh shiny larvesta 141 that looks insane yo what a beautiful shiny pokemon and i can't wait to see what this thing looks like evolved 9 out of 10 easily and i do like this more than the original chat gives us the name sanic we go back to gathering tms but once we finish you know we had to evolve this bad boy 10 out of 10 need i say more with everything done and out of the way all we can do now is prep for the elite four four of the strongest trainers across the region plus a champion after a lot of intense thinking some mischievous ideas and a little nap we concluded our preparation with the following team pikachu one of our longest living and one of the most clutch pokemon we've had the entire run shrek the absolute monster being able to primal evolve and provide a huge strength when needed dabzel with the ability super luck this pokemon will always get a critical hit sanic the newest member but an absolutely insane pickup Mosquito, a super buff mosquito that someone peed on and Guguzma, who hits like a truck, but gets scared when it gets hurt. Will this team of custom shiny Pokemon be able to take on the best that Alola has to offer? Only one way to find out. So I'm going to sum up the first three Elite Four fights to save us all some time. We first fought Molain, the Steel-type user, who got absolutely obliterated by Sanic and Shrek. Second up is Olivia the Rock type user, and Shrek and Peaskeeto dealt with her pretty easily with their type advantages. Dabzel swept Ace Rolla completely with his super effective crit moves. She did have a custom Polo Sand, which is pretty cool to see, but the shiny itself wasn't great. But lastly is this bird lady, who nobody knows anything about. She led with Braviary, and we led with Shrek, and we did take it down, but not before taking a few Brave Birds. She then sends out Mandibuzz, and Shrek handles that too. Alucha then comes out, but Pinkachu one-shots it. Two Cannon came out, and we swapped in a Dabzel, who fell to a Z-move. RIP to that trooper. Peacekeeto came out and did some good damage before getting knocked out, but you know he went down in style. <laughs> he went out flexing, bro. P went out flexing, bro. Did not care. Then Guzma came out and dealt with two cannon. Last up was the fire type Oracorio who outsped and triggered Guzma's ability, so he sent in Shrek, who broke through confusion twice and took out our final Pokemon. After defeating the Elite Four, we can go take the throne and become the champion. But just then, Howe appeared and is our final foe. He leads with Alolan Raichu and Guruzma one-shots it with First Impression. Next out is Noivern and I misclick First Impression again and because of this mistake, Guruzma falls. But there's no time to mourn, it's a 3v5 and we need to win here. Pikachu comes out and avenges Guruzma. Flareon comes out and takes down Pikachu. So far it's been a 1 for 1 fight and it's now a 2v4. Santa comes out, but it gets one shot by Flare Blitz. Although this does look bad, we have our best Pokemon in the back. Shrek, we wouldn't be this far without you. We need you to come through one last time. Earthquake one shots. Primarina comes out, survives the Thunderbolt, and Hal goes for a Z move, but it gets evaporated from the heat. We land a critical hit Thunderbolt and Primarina falls. Tauros comes out and hits a double edge and survives a fire punch. Hal uses a forest store and Tauros lives again. Hal uses another forest store and Tauros lives again. And then he uses Giga Impact, dropping us down to 69 HP. Nice. We finally take it out. 
Last out is Crabominable. This comes down to a battle of speed. Whoever outspeeds wins and becomes champion. Remember, we can't use items in battle, so we can't heal Shrek. I click Fire Punch and pray. We're gamers, chat! Let's go, baby! We're gamers, and we are gaming, and you can't tell me otherwise. You were here. All of you were here live to witness the victory, the success, and I even misclicked the mon. That is Pokemon Ultra Sun, but with only custom shiny Pokemon. Okay, jokes aside, let's look at the stats. With over 9,500 encounters, 1 out of 100 shiny odds, this means we should have found over 95 shinies. How many did we find? 72. Not too bad, to be honest. On screen now, I am showing the custom legendary Pokemon that we did not get to cover in this video. Let me know down below your thoughts on the custom shiny Pokemon in this game, and let me know your favorite. While you're down there, be sure to click like and subscribe, as this is my first video of the year, and you can bet I have plenty more videos to share, including custom shiny videos like this one. If you like to play the game for yourself, I've linked to the creator's discord in the description where he has step-by-step -step instructions on how to install this ROM hack. If you enjoyed this video, I'm sure you'll love this video on screen now where I do a similar playthrough of the Hoenn region using only custom shiny Pokemon. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.